competition in the horrid faces of pagan gods that glare out from a corner of the building, their elephant snouts turned down as though to snuff up the chilled blood of the beholder. Similar masks that turn their noses up for some unexplained reason are to be found at Chichen Itza, perhaps 80 warriors, called so for its carvings of military figures. Although the passing visitor finds it more remarkable for a multiplicity of columns on which the carvings occur. Some of the columns are startling, representing great serpents descending from the sky, their tails in the air, their yawning, hungry mouths on the ground. Here, too, is a chakmul, one of those queer ceremonial figures like a gingerbread man awakened suddenly from a bad dream. One sees three periods of construction in the Temple of the Warriors. A low pyramid foundation first, a temple atop that, and another temple enclosed, each erected at a different time. From the top floor, so to speak, you can see one of those elephant noses curling in at the upper corner. You have an excellent view of the nearby El Castillo, the pyramid temple of the Maya god Kukulkan. It is partly restored, two sides of it being left to show how it was found, covered with earth and vegetation. Now the view is generally west, toward the house of the tigers and the great ball court. It was in the ball courts of ancient Mexico that the Spanish conquerors first learned about rubber. The Indian players used a rubber ball, not permitted to use their hands, but striking the ball with their bodies. Each team worked to put the ball through a ring. The rings may be seen here high on the side walls. The losing captain forfeited his clothes, lost his shirt, so to speak. Some say that in the old days he lost his head, but that hardly matters now. And beside, now you want to know what this is. Well, these interesting sculptures are around the face of a low platform at the side of the ball court. It was an observatory. Great astronomers, those Mayas, knew more about the calendar than Columbus did, and high in mathematics, too. They gave us the cipher for our decimal system. We do not know the details. All of that ancient world was cut off when white invaders destroyed the written records. Yet here is a strange fact. The people who made that ancient world and lived in it still live on in our modern world. Numbers of them right there in Yucatan. People of two worlds. But if they know the secrets of their amazing ancestors, the tantalizing, baffling mysteries of that glittering civilization that grew in Stone Age circumstances, shaped with stone implements, no horses and no knowledge of the principle of the wheel, unknown to the entire Eastern Hemisphere until Columbus and his followers stumbled upon it, if they know the full story of this bygone golden age, these unassuming, silent, peaceful people, they're not telling. Nevertheless, there must be a link. The mark of antiquity is upon these folk. They live in houses that are built essentially in the same pre-Columbian manner. They go to market afoot in the same age-old way to sell goods of simple sorts that probably were commonplace in their public squares a thousand years ago. A thousand, possibly more. A race that worshipped a feathered serpent may have known what science tells us now, that ancestors of the birds which sing and fly in the open sky were actually snakes that crawled upon the ground. That certainly is going back to the very dawn of human life. Here in the marketplace of Merida, the two worlds come together, the ancient people, the modern city. Ay, Yucatan is a place different from all the others, and nobody is more conscious of that than the average Mexican when he tells you gravely that his country consists of Mexico and Yucatan. After their centuries of unchanging habits, these living descendants of the mighty Mayas must be amused in their subdued way when some visitor from the north uses the word quaint to describe a given local custom no older than his own gay 90s. Take, for example, the baker's delivery system. Many tourists remember the Yucatan baker boys more vividly than they do the solemn remains of bygone Mayan cities. Of course, they are picturesque to us, but in Merida, the system is just a passing utility. When the fresh bread emerges from the oven, the baker summons his small army of boys and sends them forth bearing lesser ovens on their heads to carry product piping hot to the customer's doorstep. Or an auto-minded tourist may be fascinated by a horse-drawn cab. 
or by this Bolan in the country districts. This is what they used in the older days of the haciendas, the large estates, an elegant carriage then indeed. The fact is that the Yucatians are not as much interested in transportation as we are. The ancient Mayas established a national habit of walking. You know, they didn't even have horses in Mexico until the Spaniards brought them. But don't think that these people who prefer to walk do not enjoy life. Let's follow these ladies inside and we'll soon see that the people of Yucatan also have their healthy pleasures. It is the beginning of Lent, but in Mexico that season, which is one of restraint in most other places, is broken by feast days. And today at the plantation home, there is masking and general merrymaking. The family and all the neighbors are present, not counting us. Good heavens, maybe this is us. The dance is the bright harana, native to Yucatan. Señorita, está usted muy linda. ¿Bailamos? And, just as any other nice girl in any other language would do, she said, sure I will. So they danced and danced, and by and by they were married and went to live in the big house and... Wait a minute, no, that was somebody else. Anyway, they danced and danced and danced. <laughs> Pardon me. By this time, naturally, any lady or gentleman who could take a hint knew that the party was over. Proving, in short, that the people of two worlds, like the people of one world, ourselves for instance, are fundamentally just regular human beings meeting human situations and human ways. And let us remember as we go through the Hacienda Gate in our Bolan that while the setting may be different, the kindly folk there find their aspirations in the same sky that covers us, even if to us the sky...